What is the most bullshit reason for a teacher to give you a bad grade? We had weekly spelling tests in my 11th grade English class, which I thought was a bit remedial by that point, and probably said so in a not completely diplomatic way. The teacher even made you write any words you got wrong 5 times and hand that into her by 10 of the class. I would typically get perfect scores on them, but one time I got a test back with no actual errors, marked as a 0%. My teacher's explanation was she saw me talking to someone in our free period before class who ended up doing poorly and that was my fault because I distracted them from possibly studying. What? How does this make literally any sense? Teachers are not always as impartial as people in that position should be. Bad days and personal grudges are often a culprit for an unfair grade or detention. My teacher lost my course walk on the bus home. I refused to redo a year's worth of work in 3 weeks, and I got taken from an A to a C bullshit. School sided with him. What kind of school allows a teacher to, I assume, admit they lost course or can? Have the school go oh well, students fault, minus points. That makes no sense to me. This happened at my secondary school as well. The teacher won't admit to losing the work, and then it becomes UVS them on if you actually submitted it, or they lost it. I've never seen a student win this argument. She gave me a zero, because she didn't think I read the book. She said I would've gotten a 75%, if she thought I read it 75% of the test questions right supposedly means, I didn't actually do the reading, still one, of those things, that pisses me off even 10 years, later. Why wouldn't you give her a verbal synopsis of the book, when she said you didn't read it? 4th grade, the day before Thanksgiving break. There was no work to be done of course, so we had a busy work art assignment. We were all handed graph paper and told to color each of the squares either yellow, orange, red, or brown. And once we finished, we were supposed to cut out corn shapes to make Indian corn decorations. I already thought this waa stupid and filling an asterisk all asterisk the squares was tedious. So I traced the corn shape on the graph paper and only filled in the squares that would end up as part of the final product. This meant my decorations looked the same as all the others, but I didn't waste time filling in squares that would just get cut away. When the teacher saw what I had done, she gave me a 50 for skipping work. I was accused of plagiarism because I had an above average vocabulary. I got a grade in the end, but I was ticked. It was a group project where nobody did anything. I had to do the whole thing and turn it into a teacher who usually works with the special needs kids. She didn't think preemptive strike was a term an 8th grader should know so obviously it was plagiarized. I got the same for knowing what a swastika was when I was 12. I wasn't even a high achiever or anything, just a kid who read books. Within a year the same school was showing us the world at war, the excellent WW2 history documentary series from the 1970s that's narrated by Lawrence Olivier, and using it as an educational resource. So basically a 12 year old couldn't possibly know what a swastika was but a 13 year old should know the ins and outs of WW2 in detail, and be able to answer graded questions on it. Joined up thinking from the history department there. I did a presentation in biology. The teacher told me she wanted me to do a creative introduction instead of just opening it with the standard today I'll be presenting. So I did. I invented a short story about an old lady going to the supermarket and worked in some early symptoms of Alzheimer's, the topic I was presenting. I was so invested in that character, she had a name and a backstory, I even drew up a few comic panels, so that everyone could follow along easily, then at the end of my presentation I asked my class which symptoms the old lady in the story had, and hence what stage her Alzheimer's was. I get my grade back, and the teacher deducted points for the intro, since she told me to do a creative intro so it wasn't an original idea. Like what the hell. I came up with the story, I drew the comic panels, all of that was me. I felt so betrayed. 
if I hadn't done a creative intro she would have deducted points, so I did one, and she deducted points anyway. And after all that work. Still grinds my gears. I was 15, at the time. For some reason this is the worst one to me. Me, Miss 30th, you didn't give me a point for this, but it is on the mark scheme. Miss 30th, I don't agree with the mark scheme, so I didn't give you the mark. For context, this is a standardized test which is why there is a mark scheme. Edit, this is a practice test. We use past papers and hence past mark schemes. Sorry for the confusion. A spelling test, not graded by the teacher, but by the kid next to us. Kid named Anthony decided all my words that had letters U and E were switched and marked pretty much every word wrong. They, they weren't. Like, this was probably in third grade, so my handwriting was chicken scratch, but that was really stupid. To me I was upset, since it was the first time I failed something in school. I remember doing tasks in school all the time that required us to switch papers and mark each other. It was a way of saving time for the teacher of course but also a way to find out which kids were vindictive little airy souls that wanted others to fail. I got 10 tenths on a test, but my teacher took points away from me because she didn't want my classmates to be jealous of my grade. This was English class in a Dutch school, so English is a requirement. I was the only native English speaker in my class, and this was a course for adults only. I got a ref the first semester in chemistry, and I was really pushing myself to get a better grade for the next semester, needed a good grade to study what I wanted. Then we heard that another teacher from another school would make the test, but the teachers in our classes would grade it. So I have been doing all in my power, read everything, written summaries, did the math, watch documentaries etc. And I get the final grade, D, and I was very happy with that. Then my teacher takes me aside and tells me that I actually got a way better grade, C, could pass as a B, but if he gave me a C it would look bad for him, since I got a ref on his test the semester before. So I was pretty pissed after that, but he left before I could say anything. It was my last day of school as well. So he basically said that you improved so much that it would look bad on him as a teacher if you got a good grade. Does he logic much? In high school, I used the word lascivious to describe a character in a book and my teacher didn't know what the word meant. So logically, he took off a point because he didn't read my paper. It was a university class where Atar was responsible for grading the papers. He was clearly overwhelmed and just reading introductions and grading based on them alone. I had a two-part introduction that fully addressed the prompt, but as he only read the first part one got my paper back with a big C at the top. I ended up getting full credit after I challenged the initial grade. Glad you had a better result. My first large college paper, for a pre-Civil War history class, freshman year came back with a giant red D written on it with practically no feedback. I was in a writing program, and I had always excelled at essays, so I was sort of shocked. Went to the professor, and asked him about the grade and lack of instruction. He sighed, looked down and said, Westhoff. I don't like you. He went on and on after that with some bullshit reasons, but apparently the big issue came from the first week of class. He was talking about Manifest Destiny and said something like, Now you have to remember, back in those days there were 50 to 100 miles between towns out in the western USA. And I raised my hand and said that there was still 50 to 100 miles between towns in the western US. He said I was exaggerating, and I told him I wasn't, because that's where I grew up. That paper was 40% of our grade. He refused to change the grade or even reread it. I scraped a C plus in that class, and I was so fucking proud of that grade, even though it was the worst grade I received in my life. At the end of the semester, I decided to ask him for his grading documentation to see if I could challenge the paper with the school, but he claimed he had already thrown it away. I found out later that was bullshit too, but I didn't press any further. 
I failed a lead exam in college because I answered a question too well. We were supposed to write an essay comparing and contrasting one of the books that we read that semester to a modern concept or ideal. We had known about this particular question for weeks, so we had had plenty of time to prepare. Apparently it's possible to be too correct, because the response I got was that, though it is clear I did not plagiarize, none of my thoughts were original, and matched too closely with the author's interpretation of the work. I was the only person, in the class, to not only fail, but, to get less, than a B, I got no other bad marks, on the rest, of the exam, either, he failed me based, on just, that one part. I too got a lowered grade for answering too well. Had studied and been to all class sessions, so I knew the material well enough to be very succinct in my answers. Only filled half the blue book instead of sing the whole thing. He gave me a C, only because it was too short. From then on I went back to skimming the reading and sing the entire blue book tests. Made as the rest of the semester. <laughs> Essay topic was Henry V the hero. I argued he wasn't, because crazy risks involved. You're not allowed to make that argument. F. This would be an A paper from some other students, but you can do better. I got a C, and no other feedback on how to improve. Edit, thanks for the gold, and for all the comments. It seems I'm not alone in this one. Your mistake was being too awesome on your previous papers. Apparently so. I didn't think it phoned it in on that one, but maybe it seemed like it. Still, that comment really should have come with at least one area for improvement. I was taking a one week online class in the syllabus, the teacher said you must post 6 times throughout the week. So, I posted 6x on Monday, 1x on Wednesday, and felt I was good to go. I get my grade slash teacher comments and the teacher wrote asterisk kayan0905, you had some good posts early in the week, but then you stopped posting, so in order to mark udown asterisk I was annoyed by this, but then realized it was the last online course in the program and frankly I didn't care. I still graduated, and that certificate is proudly sitting in my junk drawer, for all to see. Taking online courses now and uh, Rule in almost every single class seems to be one post and comment on two of your classmates posts. Every week it's the same posts, topic, is really interesting and important. I really learned a lot, especially about, quote from lecture slide. Then a few responses saying I really agree, topic, really is important in today's industry. I didn't like a movie that was supposed to be her favorite. She would do stuff like this all the time to other students as well. Complaints were made, but I graduated before I saw where it lead. It insists upon itself. My 7th grade gym teacher gave me a D because I hardly ever smiled. My life sucked at that time. You seem like an unhappy kid. Let me give you something else to be unhappy about because of it. The beatings will continue until morale improves. A friend of mine got a minus one for scratching his head. Our teacher said he was faking it. I guess that teacher had too many bad experiences with women who faked head scratches. Fake head scratches are a real problem in our society, and they're probably what causes hurricanes. Staples were not in the right spot for my essay, even though I had them, in the top, left corner, like always. That's when you know the teacher doesn't like you, and is literally looking for petty reasons to take points off. My friend failed French, because she had a French accent. And the teacher couldn't understand her French, because she was American. My friend, had spoke French, since she was 4. Took Spanish class in high school. Half the class was either born in Mexico or first generation American with Mexican parents. But apparently Mexican Spanish isn't real Spanish and would make them down for having accents. Our Spanish teacher was fired after. He failed the whole class. Including his born and raised for the first 10 years of her life in Mexico daughter. 
In the 90s my family didn't have a computer, and I had no access to one. I spent a lot of time on a handwritten assignment for school and the teacher gave me a B, writing as a comment, I would have given you an A, if you had typed it up on a computer. Im, still better. I knew a girl in the early 2000s who used a typewriter because she didn't have a printer or a floppy disk reader in her computer, 